Hi there and welcome back to the Aqua Security Open Source YouTube channel. If you're new here, it's really great to have you here. My name is Anais, I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here at Aqua and this video is about K-Bomb. Now what is a K-Bomb? Now I'm not talking about music, I'm not talking about K-Pop, I'm talking about K-Bomb relating to your Kubernetes infrastructure. You might have heard about SBOM. SBOM stands for Software Bill of Materials. It's basically an inventory list of all of the components, all of the dependencies, all of the libraries and resources that are within your software. That might be within your file system as you develop the application. What is within that application? What libraries are you using? Or once you've packaged up your software within a container image, what are the libraries, what are the dependencies of that container image? So an SBOM basically tells you everything that's within your application or your container image. So what is a KBOM? KBOM stands for Kubernetes Bill of Materials. And it basically relates to all of the components that make up your Kubernetes infrastructure. Now, I'm not talking about the workloads that you run on your Kubernetes cluster, such as the pod, deployments, replica sets, other resources that you install once you have the Kubernetes cluster. The KBOM specifically relates to the core Kubernetes components, the components that are installed within your kube system namespace to run your Kubernetes cluster. So a few months ago, we released a blog post introducing our idea of what is a KBOM. What does a KBOM do? Now, the link to the blog post is linked below in the description of this video, so check that out if you're curious and reading the entire blog post. But basically, here's how we define a KBOM. It is a manifest of all the important components that make up your Kubernetes cluster, and this includes the control plane components, the node components, and any add-ons. So if you're using, for example, Celion as your networking layer, that is part of your add-ons. And this includes their versioning and images. So everything that is installed already in your Kubernetes cluster that makes your Kubernetes cluster work is part of the KBOM, all of the components that you usually don't have insights to. So with this, with a KBOM, you can answer questions such as, which API server version are you currently running? Which flavor of kubelet is running on each node? What kind of network plugin are you currently using? Now this information informs you on the state of your Kubernetes infrastructure. And it's specifically important to your security team, to your infrastructure team, to see the development of your Kubernetes cluster over time. And maybe to really see when you should really upgrade the Kubernetes version that you're using. Fast forward, we've just introduced at KubeCon in Chicago that we can now generate KBOM and scan the KBOM for vulnerabilities with Trivi as well. So in this blog post, I'm detailing how you can actually generate the KBOM and then scan it for vulnerabilities. So how does Trivi know about the vulnerabilities that are present in the components that make your Kubernetes infrastructure, your Kubernetes cluster work? Usually when you scan a container image or another resource such as your file system for vulnerabilities, what happens is that the vulnerability scanner, for instance, Trivi, has access to a vulnerability database. So we have the Trivi vulnerability database. The database is automatically updated every six hours. Now the information in the database is largely taken from vendors such as Ubuntu or Red Hat. They basically publish vulnerabilities, information on vulnerabilities in the packages and the versions that they provide. And their information, again, is based on the National Vulnerability Database. And depending on how different packages, different libraries are affected, the vendors themselves will then classify the severity of the vulnerability within their own library. And that's why you sometimes see also differences in the severity of vulnerabilities um, now, in the case of Kubernetes, we had to access Kubernetes vulnerabilities. And there's a Kubernetes vulnerability feed. And it's basically, this is the kind of data that you find in the Kubernetes vulnerability uh, feed. And we had to basically access that information and we turned it into a vulnerability list for hates. So, we transformed that information to make it usable for Trivi to access what are the vulnerabilities within your Kubernetes cluster, within the core components that are installed in your Kubernetes cluster. 
And that's part of the Kubernetes vulnerability database, um, which is taken from the official vulnerability feed from upstream Kubernetes. And it's now maintained by Aqua Security. You can find all of the KBOMB related information when you head over to the Trivi GitHub repository, also linked below in the description. Then head over to the documentation. In the documentation, we go to the docs section. However, if you haven't Trivi installed, make sure you install Trivi first. There are lots of different installation options depending on your operating system and preferences and package manager. And then we can head over to the documentation section and within you, we have several different scan targets. These scan targets reference to things that Trivi can scan. And among those are Kubernetes clusters. We can scan Kubernetes infrastructure. Now here are different examples on how you can scan different components, such as the workloads and within of your Kubernetes cluster. You can also perform compliance scans, but we are interested in KBOM. So how can you generate a KBOM? This is done with the normal Trivi Kates command. And we just basically say we want to scan the entire cluster. And then we want to use the Cyclone DX format. Cyclone DX is one of the software bill of materials, bill of material formats. The other one is SPDX. And there's also SPDX Lite. We support Cyclone DX and SPDX, uh, whether you're using SBOM or you're generating a KBOM. And the output should be in the KBOM uh, JSON file. So we can copy paste that command to get started with. On a basic kind Kubernetes cluster, it's a one node Kubernetes cluster and I can go ahead and I can generate the KBOM of that cluster. So this is going to be saved in the my kbom.cdx.json file. Now I can look at the my kbom file and as you can see, this is JSON and it will provide me with all of the different components that are present in my uh, Trivi demo Kubernetes cluster. Now I can also pipe the information in the KBOM file to JLess and JLess will then allow me to go through the different uh, sections better. So here are the different components that are part of my Kubernetes cluster. So I could look at them separately. Here's, for example, the API server. This is the version of the API server that's running. And this will allow me with JLS to go easier through that KBOM if I wish to do so. Then when we want to scan those different components for vulnerabilities, we perform the same scan as if we use Trivi to scan a SBOM for vulnerabilities. And that's Trivi SBOM command. And then we pass in the file. That's the scan target basically for Trivi, for Trivi to use to scan it for vulnerabilities. Now, as you can see, I'm downloading the database because I haven't performed a scan in quite some while. And that's why I had to have to update the database first. So here's the installed version that I'm currently using of the kubelet. And it has a CVE, it has a high CV. And here are the different fixed version that don't have that uh, vulnerability present. Now I wouldn't know that without scanning the KBOM, without scanning my Kubernetes infrastructure for vulnerabilities. However, through performing that scan, I can now use a different version, use an updated version uh, or a different version really <laughs> of my Kubernetes cluster, of my kubelet. So you might wonder what is next for KBOM and Trivi? Well, every installation, every flavor of Kubernetes and the way that the infrastructure is run and installed is slightly different. So every cloud provider will add and remove uh, components from upstream Kubernetes. And we're aiming to make the scan result of the KBOM of your Kubernetes core infrastructure most relevant to you. So that's what we're currently working towards. So you get relevant information to the components that your cloud provider is using, is installing. Now that doesn't mean that the KBOM doesn't provide you with useful information. It's just that some information can be more accurate. So how can you stay up to date with future developments? Well, first of all, give us a star on GitHub. We are so close to 20,000 stars and it would mean so much to the maintainers as well as to myself if we could reach that goal soon. 
Now, if you have any questions relating to KBOM, relating to Trivi or specific use cases, either ask here in the discussion section and comment section on YouTube or join our open source Slack community where you can post questions in the relevant channels or the most effective way is probably to create a discussion on GitHub so more people see it now as well as in the future and can reference your ideas, your comments and your feedback. Lastly, it would mean so much to myself if you could subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay up to date with future tutorials and give this video a thumbs up. I really hope to see you in one of our next videos. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.